Today is Friday, November 8th, 2019, and this marks the end of the fifth week of the fuselage part of the build for the Sling TSI. Um, this week's been a little bit slower than the last couple weeks. Um, just trying to figure out how everything fits together, how everything works, and uh, there's a couple extra pieces, a couple missing pieces, a couple wrong pieces, so trying to figure all that out kind of set me back a little bit, but I did manage to get a fair bit done. Um, this is the heater. I got that uh, installed and ready to be wired up. I ran all the wiring through from the back of the plane. Um, the back of the plane down the center there to where it's going to have to connect in the panel. Um, I've got COM2 com there, um, the pitot line, COM1's up on the top. I got the autopilot servos installed and probably, um, well I'll get to that in a second. I've got the rudder cables hooked up and running all the way up to the, the pedals. Uh, the side skin's riveted on. Um, the underneath of the plane is all riveted and looking pretty satisfying. So the shop is having to be reorganized, you know, daily at this point. The most satisfying part of the build so far, though, is I've got everything kind of hooked up and ready. So that elevator tube goes all the way to the back there there it is um all this cross bracing um support jig stuff is going to come out soon i hope um but i've got to soundproof the inside walls here as well as uh hook up the these ports to be the uh, rear heating and and uh, ventilation so it kind of along uh this top channel to the back is kind of what becomes the uh, duct work. Um, I've got the uh, nose wheel push rods installed to the rudder pedals. Um, not a huge deal, but all in all, it's more or less ready for avionics pretty soon here. So I think that uh, the next step is to get it off this sketchy little stand um, I don't leave it like this when I'm not here. Uh, I put this guy under there for a little extra support, but it's sturdy. Um, so what I want to do is get the landing gear mounted, the main gear at least, mounted up under there. And then I'll probably rest the tail on uh, this table. And just get a little bit lower down and easier to work on. But it, the only way I could do this by myself was to basically slide the two by four underneath where the, the main gear mounts uh, at the same height as what this table was. And so it's kind of just sitting exactly at the same height as it was. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, now it's nice and easy to get underneath and work, but kind of a pain in the ass to get up here. So, not a whole lot as far as excitement for this update, but it's uh, massively time consuming to prepare all these sides, make sure everything lines up properly, rivet it in one by one, pulling Clecos out one at a time sometimes because it's a little bit tough to get around these curves, but uh, it all came together pretty nice. Uh, the reason that the main spar is still just clecoed is because the wings connect into the main spar and uh, if you rivet it together you might rivet it slightly too close to get the wings uh, in there uh, i guess this isn't the main spar it's the carry through but anyway you don't want to rivet it too close to get the wings in or too far apart and kind of have some gap so what you do is you wait for the wings to install then you tighten everything up and then you can rivet everything in its final location. Um, so a weird thing that the factory told me was that 
they haven't been using their pedostatic system. Um, they say that inside the cabin pressure is a more accurate way than the, the static port location that they use. Um, so this is going to be an IFR certified plane, so it's going to have an alternate static port to the inside of the plane anyway. So I guess I'll just give it a try and uh, see how that goes. So I'm putting in about 50 hours a week. So <clears throat> I guess that comes to about 250 hours so far on the fuselage after five weeks. Um, I wouldn't say that all 50 hours are spent building. Probably 10 of those hours are spent Googling and searching for parts and all this stuff. And I stay fairly organized. I mean, wing kit, everything's just still there, but the finishing kit, I mean, I stay fairly organized in here and I still s seem to waste a bunch of time looking for stuff. Um, maybe it's not even looking for the parts specifically, more so looking for where they go because the instructions aren't thorough. But yeah, so I'm about 250 hours into the fuselage here and I think the empanage took a total of, man, maybe, maybe about 100 hours. I've got it written down, I think it's 120. So all in on the build, everything, everything here is, what does that come to? 370 hours? Not bad, not great. Time flies though. Another fairly frustrating thing is the autopilot push rods aren't included in the finishing kit with the rest of the push rods. It's an electrics kit for some reason that they recommend not to buy. So I spent, you know, a good chunk of time looking for the autopilot push rods to hook everything up, only to find out that they're not included. So if you're gonna build this plane, make sure you uh, have those ordered ahead of time or you're getting the electrics kit or however you wanna do it. But um, yeah, next step is pretty much gonna be the avionics. I don't wanna to get too far along in here with and button everything up without being able to uh, do the wiring first. So that'll be a bit of a learning curve, but I don't think it'll be too, too bad to handle. Uh, let's see. Yep, got the under undercarriage here ready to go, hopefully at some point next week. So yeah, next week's update, hopefully it'll be Sing, sitting right here on its main main gear with the tail supported by this table and I'll have the wings started up on this table. So, all right, until next week, that'll do it.